get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house into a land that I will show you. You cannot fulfill a call you receive from God just anywhere. There is a specific location that you will need to be in order for that calling to be in view. That location can be a church. That location can be a ministry. That location can be a family. That location can be a nation. That location can be a territory. But every call is location specific. For instance, if God's will for you is to be in RCN, and you find an equally wonderful ministry, and you are there, you have violated the law of location. And it is very likely that God may stop talking about the calling because you are disaligned. The day you decide to restitute that position and you come into the location that God has ordained for you to be, then he now continues to talk about the matter. The issue about obeying God, staying where God has placed you, functioning where God has placed you, is this. God cannot walk in every location. As touching your life, there is a specific location that you need to be if the agenda of God for your life is going to prosper. So the second thing about a call, the second symptom of a call is that it is location-specific. Now, um, Pastor Tony, can you pick the mic and come up? Meanwhile, I did not inform him that I will call you. You know, all those things I do here, I don't give the people prior. You know why they don't need prior notice? What's your name, sister? Yeah. Give me a short form. The name is long. Comfort. Comfort. Now, if I called you to the stage now and I give you the microphone and I ask you to talk about yourself, you don't need to prepare. Talk about yourself. You can tell us the primary school you attended, the secondary school. You can mention a few names of people that were your friends in primary school, in secondary school, in the university, because you're talking about yourself. Your spiritual self, the epicenter of your spiritual self, is your calling. So if we call you to talk about your calling, that's your spiritual reality. That's what God made you alive to understand in the spirit that this is your lot and this is your portion. It is critical. And that's why we don't need prior notice. Now, so, uh, what did God do to you that made you know that you were supposed to follow me? Because, let me tell you, those days, there were people, those days on campus, were, were, you, you, were you on campus when I was there? No. No, he wasn't there. Those are the young men. We were, we've been. Uh, <laughs> all right, so she did not even have the opportunity to meet me on campus. At, at what point did you meet me, and what convinced you that you were supposed to Walk with me. Because there is a place for a call. A call doesn't exist in a vacuum. There is, and you see, this place matter is critical. Because not everybody has a pioneering calling. Many more people, 80%, only 20% of individuals in the body of Christ have the privilege to serve God in pioneering capacity. And I must tell you as a pioneer that I did not desire to be a pioneer because life is more difficult for a pioneer. The only reason why you should accept the call of a pioneer, the labor of a pioneer, is that you have the calling to be a pioneer. A calling to be a pioneer is going to expose you, to expose your family, to expose your children. It will put you on the edge. It's better for you to serve God under an existing pioneer. It's easier. All right, so this is not what I chose. I did not choose to be a pioneer. 
I did not choose it. But I'm going to tell you my own story. Now, so this is Tony. We never met in the university. At what point did you become convinced that you were supposed to follow me? Um, praise the Lord. Thank you very much, sir. For now, don't forget that the land, are you there? The land of your calling is not of your own choosing. You say, I'm going to send you to a land that I will show you. It's not something you conceive by your own human wisdom. You must be shown the land. And that's the second symptom of a calling. Yes? Over to you, Pastor Thank Tony. you very much, sir. Yeah. I think um, it, the main crisis for me began in my final year when I was... Now, I told you people, whenever you come up here, don't... don't yeah. I, w I became the president of a campus fellowship, and um, I felt that there was something really missing in uh, the progression of God's working in my life. And um, I've watched Evangelist Gabi Todo. He has been a minister of campus for quite some time. And uh, I met him, and I told him I wanted to come under his discipleship to learn from him. Okay. It was at his instance that I got invited to uh, the first contact that was held at Just Taka Foundation. Oh, you were there? The very first day. Well, well, well there I'm was just something that out happened. Now. Okay, there was something that happened. Um, before now, I read the Bible a lot, but when I got to that meeting, um, what I can say was a, a, a voice, the voice of the shepherd was what I heard when I heard you preach. Okay. It became clear that um, I couldn't really place it, but the scriptures I know, I saw constructions being made with the truths I already have, and it was a hard connection for me at that time. Now, the reason for these testimonies is so that you can understand the experience. You know, when we are reading the Bible and teaching the Bible, it is very intellectual. Most of us understand it from the mind. But in the execution of the plans and the purposes of God, you know the will of God in your heart. It's not, it's not an intellectual enterprise. It's an experiential enterprise. The things that happen to you that amounts to the full knowledge of the fact that God has called you is experiential. So when he got to the place, yes, so many things happened, but you know he wasn't talking about the opening prayer because his experience did not come from that. Are you safe for what I'm talking about? He did not talk about the praise and worship, and I believe there was praise and worship. There were people singing something, beating drums. His experience didn't come from that. And meanwhile, Jesus is always looking for an opportunity to reveal himself. He can be revealed in worship. He can be revealed in prayer. There are several people that came here. It was the prayer aspect of the meeting that they got their own encounter with God. So God will be looking for an opportunity to reveal himself. That's what he does. That's what the Holy Spirit does. But the, the, the revealing took place, the unveiling took place while the message was going on. And if you ask me what message... I don't remember because I'm not involved in, in what led to his encounter. I was just preaching the scripture that I felt the Lord has laid on my heart, and God used that as an opportunity to reveal himself in such a way that made that impression, that impact on his heart. And when the impact was made, he could see himself in the tribe. It's experiential, not intellectual. What I'm explaining is intellectual. You're holding it in your brain. But that's not how it plays out. It plays out experientially. I want you to take time to describe your experience again before I let you off the hook. You know, so that day I was there, it looked like a thousand messages were preached in a moment. And... Um, I couldn't cram them, but I knew my heart was being ministered, was being ministered to. And then uh, eventually I got the opportunity to come close to this man that <laughs> it was a dread. 
Yes, the preacher that they used to. You know, a lot of people who believe that when you see me on the pulpit preaching, especially when I bloody, you will think that I'm a hard man. So, until you have the opportunity to meet me on the ground. So, what was your experience when you came, you met the man, the man shouting on the pulpit? You know, when, when I came really close, it was another crisis moment because the simplicity was, was something else altogether. We will be in Apostle's house. There was one rule there, if you eat, wash your plate. And everybody, the kitchen was, it was, they, they, he was so open and simple that um, I wanted to be like him. And there were other personal time I had with him that, got me really thinking. One of those times, we were sitting on your car outside of uh, that um, drug law house, and you asked me a question that really was humbling for me. You said, Tony, if you notice I'm doing something wrong, will you have the boldness to tell me? And I said, yes. And then you said, now you, you accept me, you are safe with me. And um, it was something that really was a very turning moment. And um, there were points where I got specific instruction. During my NYC, I was really involved in um, RCN before I went for service. And the normal thing that happened in my family is if you go for service, don't come back home so that you don't, your family just let them feel that you are, you, are, you are making progress. And I was already ready to stay back in Nemo State, and the Lord told me to come back to Benue State. You know, I said, there is a location. Now, a lot of people are doing the things God wants them to do, but unfortunately, they are doing it in the wrong location. And you, it means you are not doing it for God. You are going to struggle. God is not aware that you are there. And what you claim you are doing, uh, you're on your own. Location is critical. A pastor came to see me in my office for counseling. And he said that I am convinced the Lord has called me to pioneer a ministry. I said, bless God. Praise God. And uh, that because I was so convinced, I resigned from the ministry that I was working with. I, oh, my God, praise God. Then I asked him, where is the location of this ministry? He said he doesn't know yet. Now, so he went as far as re resignation. When he was not clear on the location that God wanted him to go. You, 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 you guys don't know God. Eh? It, can take him, it can take God five years to tell you the location. Please help me preach to your neighbor. God is in a hurry. But he's in, not in a hurry with you. <laughs> he wants to smuggle revival into the land. He's in a hurry. He's trying to do something. But for, with you, he's not in a hurry. So this guy took off like a tornado. God is so meticulous. And he has, he has his own timing for everything. So it gave you an insight that, okay, yes, there's a pioneering call. But you became smart and felt that you were smarter than God, that you should, uh -uh, it should be Abuja now. It's Abuja. The difference between a pioneer and a non-pioneer is this. If you are not a pioneer and you enter into an existing ministry, it means that God is giving the leadership of that ministry the responsibility of determining your location. That's part of the package that God had in mind before he allocated you into that mission. Okay? But if you are going to pioneer, you must understand that you will need to know what he wants you to do. You also need to know where he wants you to do it. So you were convinced that you were to follow me. You were in Imo State trying to arrange your accounting probe. <laughs> he was trying to settle his life there. 
And what exactly did God tell you that made you come he said, back? Come back to Benue State and work among the youths. So I spent six months praying, and then I started having dreams where you will give me an assignment to pray for somebody in the dreams, in the visions of the night. And on, in one of those uh, dreams, when I began to engage the assignment you gave me, a wind came and carried me from the ground. And as, as I was being elevated by the wind, I was hearing years, 2010, 2011, 2012, and it was counting as all of that will happen. So it informed my philosophy of assignments, duties, and responsibilities. Before we received this conviction, me and him were already friends. Yes, we were already close friends. So and he now came back from his youth service and told me that the relationship has changed, that he's no longer friends. We are not friends. You see, it's a difficult, if it's a very serious matter for you to call somebody your I'm your father in the Lord. In my own opinion, I believe it's a big matter. Even if that is the case, when I'm speaking in the public, I say, one of my friends are here, is here, some of my friends are here. I'm more comfortable with that kind of description. Because, you know, I know a preacher that cannot preach for 35 minutes before, without saying, one of my son, you know, my son there, my son here, yeah, my son, my son. <laughs> If you know what this matter is, you will not be quick to, to be saying such things. You will not be quick to be saying such things. So he came back from Imo State and said the relationship has changed. God has given instruction to follow. I've heard that many times. So whenever I hear it, I don't believe it. The only way I believe it is if over time your actions does not contradict what you told me, it can be two years, it can be four years, until, because it's God that told you to follow me, until God now tells me that I sent him to follow you. Sometimes it can be two years, sometimes it can be three years. We'll still be, I will not believe you. <laughs> A two cannot work together except they be agreed. When God now bears witness with my spirit, then I will now place you. That waiting period, maybe he came and then it took two years before he was placed. How many years did it take? From, it took two years from 2007 to 2009. Okay, two years. The major disruption. Now, let me tell you something. Within that two years, many people that came, between the two years or three years, as the case may be, for confirmation to be established, they changed their mind. So you will know that God did not send this one. Now, when we were much younger, I had not married my wife yet. One of my friends came to me with a lady who was dating and said, God had spoken to them that when they get married, that they don't have a pioneering calling, that they were going to be part of what God will use me to do. I, I know them. They don't like prayer. So I now told him, I told them that this thing means you people need to adjust to. Are you with me? Because uh, the, the major fabric of what we are called to do has to do with intercession. And the guy was so allergic to prayer. You know, I, I, was, I, I served in Kano. And their family house was in Kano. So when we hold those meetings, where we pray for money to evening, he will come in the morning. He will pray for 30 minutes and say, he has something in Sabongeri. Yeah. For the whole number of years I was there, he was always having something in Sabongeri. There was something in Sabongeri. There's something in, in Brigade. He never finished one prayer meeting with us. Now they had come to me and said the Lord had led them. I said, well, I need to be frank with you. You know my lifestyle in terms of devotions and all of that. And I've not seen that level of coming. Can you, can you endure? Can you? Because ministry, if we say we want to do ministries, we are sold out. They say, no, they know. They we are just. Yes. Ah. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh. Four years later, they came back to me again and said, God 
spoke. And the Lord said, they should start a church in a certain city. I said, ah, great. Because I knew that they would not be able to cope. No, sincerely, I knew they would not cope. Then I now came to Makodi. We now started it. After this ministry. So the church that they started, one of the workers in that church, his relative came to visit him. So he told the person, I'll be in church when you come into the city, to come to the church. That is relative that went to visit that church, knows me. So when he came, he saw it was a serious workers' meeting. So he sat at the back. This same pastor that said to me those days that God has asked them to come and work under me. His church members now asked him, there was a time you were close to this man. What happened? This guy that came from the village, he was listening. Okay. The guy said that me, I wanted him to be his assistant pastor. So he refused. That is the reason why I stopped talking to him. See me see Wahalao. <laughs> this other guy that came from the village heard it and came out and was wondering and then made contacts and said, See what the, is this what happened? I didn't feel there was any need to explain to him. I said, Let the will of God be done. The same person took my name to another minister of the gospel, lied to him. When we now met at the airport, he knew that maybe if I engage that minister, the truth will come out. So he came and distracted everybody. Hey, 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 hey. Distracted. I didn't know what he was doing. Are you there? This other minister that he went to tell all these things, now went to preach somewhere in a congregation like this and saw a young guy and called him, asked him to stand up during his ministration. That is there any minister of the gospel in this country that can tell you stand here and you will stand? He said, yes. He now mentioned my name. That minister now became angry. This minister that is angry is angry because the other minister had told him about me in a negative light. Are you there? And then he now started saying, these small boys that call themselves uh, apostles. The moment he said that, the people in the meeting left. He only had like 20 people. Are you still following me? When I and my wife were now traveling to Lagos, we were in the business class cabin with this minister that spoke. We, he doesn't, that's when we discovered he doesn't know how I look like. But he had spoken about me because of Many years later. You know, God doesn't act quickly. This calling, you know what they call calling? It fights people. Calling. Many, many years later, it became clear that God did not choose him. What is going to differentiate you with the next person? Call him. So this matter is a serious matter. I've seen people rise and fall just because of. If it is true, if the guy had followed me as, as if he said, we would have had problem here. Because these ones, these guys that you are seeing, they are men of God. These ones are men of God. We would have had problem. You know, God, hey, Jesus Christ. God delivered me from evil. So these are the real people he brought, not that one. And 
more than 10 years ago has proven it. You can call yourself and start something. Initially, it might even look that as if something is happening. It's after 10 years, it will be clear that there is no call from God that is behind it. God will help you waste your time. So on the issue of a calling, you must be sure the location God is deploying you. Because it's going to shape your future. When you came, did you know we'll be standing on a platform like this? <laughs> it was unimaginable. So that's the third point, the third symptom. And I will bless thee. There is a guarantee. Yes, you are released. Thank you, sir. There is a guarantee that God will bless you.